Hello everyone, this is a quick introduction to SK Learn style hidden markup models in Python, particularly be using the library called HMMLearn, which allows you to learn the state transition models from your data. The documentation can be found on this website. My GitHub with all the code for this video is available right here and right here. So this library, right, this repository has everything for this video. It will soon be merged into slash YouTube. And if you want to know the theory behind hidden markup models, this is by far the best uh, YouTube video on it and on the theory and in terms of a written source. There's this textbook called Machine Learning and Pattern Recognition. This will be the best written source for hidden markup models. This book right here that is. Alright, so we import pickle to save our model, the basic data science related libraries collections for some aggregating that we'll have to do later. Uh, we use SciPy just to easily get the mode without having to type up a bunch of code. Uh, random force classifier to baseline. In terms of the data set, I'm just going to use MNIST really just for the sake of example. Even though in practical terms you may not want to use a hidden markup model for an image related task, it would be better for more like a one dimensional signal rather than something two-dimensional like our image. Though I do have mixed success and it's really half decent. Uh, this code over here allows me to have one Jupyter Notebook cell and allow me to have two outputs in it without having to actually type the word print. So starting off, I get the MNIST uh, chain images and test images and associated labels. I convert them to an NP array, normalize the image, uh, do a little bit of centering, not necessarily needed. And afterwards, uh, I use our random force classifier with 50 estimators for a quick baseline. This gives me accuracy of 96.6%. It's not as good as a CNN, but it's computationally efficient and a half decent baseline. Uh, I have a bunch of models saved, so I just opened this with uh, Pickle. So this I trained uh, 20 case samples and 20 iterations. So this would have been 20 and this would have been 20,000. So we can do a sample of our data which basically means that we're just getting some random data from our model and to my understanding when we do sample it's actually sampling it out of the model that we learned the hidden markup model that we've learned which basically means that this data does not really exist in the MS set data set it's learned from the data set so it's synthetically generated I generate 15 at a time and I randomly choose 1 to 15 and just show that one. So I can run it a few times and we can see this looks is probably an 8, this is probably a 0, this is probably a 2. Uh, I would set the code to match the classes. It's not the most elegant, but the problem is that using this line of code right here we can get everything that is in class I. So for example, this would be all of the images that are labeled as a zero in the MNIST data set. And we have our model make a prediction of that. And with that prediction, we use collections.counter and the most common three. So the hidden mark of model uh, labels are not aligned with the labels we consider in English of our numeric system. So for zero, the hidden markup model is pretty 
con confident it is in class 8 because 600 of the productions of a known zeros will in assigned to class 8 of the hidden markov model close to 300 were assigned to class 6 and so on and similarly for the other classes so the ls right here is a list of rankings and the ranking would be 8 6 0 right here and for let's say the ninth class it will be 1 2 and 4 and basically I decided to instead of having some type of heuristic to be like okay our model seems pretty confident it is 8 because this number is way higher than these numbers I could have went with that because this is probably an 8 this is probably a 7 and this is probably not a 1 because 1 is much more common up here I decided to go with a more brute force solution it is not 2 to the power of n or something like that. It It is not 3 to the power of n or something like that. It is just 3 plus 3 dot 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 10 times. That is the one time complexity. I start off with doing a deep copy of LS, calling it rankings. And my assumption is the first one, which is the most uh, common over here. So the first digits get called sum. Second choice are the second elements in all of these lists. Third choice is the third elements in all of these lists. I wrote this function called evaluate. It takes in a mapping, a proposed mapping such as this, which is my original one that got me about 20 to 30 percent as I recall and this evaluate function what it does is I wrote this a while ago however I'm pretty sure this is the equivalent of phi test equals equals i we have model dot predict our x test which are filtered to be members of our particular class for example right now we would only care about the zeroth one so we're only evaluating the zeroth uh, predictions of the digits that are zeros and unmissed. Uh, I loop over all of the predictions. I just make a quick uh, debugging like a statement every new every time this function gets called. So whenever the index is zero, which is only once, and if the Mapping sub so mappings index which corresponds to prediction. So let's say this is the index here is zero, but we are predicting class eight because our best choice for the zero class right here is indeed class eight. Or over here, our best choice is class seven, and so on. We have a mapping, we access the index, the index for C was eight. And you see if this is our MS label is indeed an 8. And our label comes from up here. And our label is just going to be 0 to 10 in order. And I just get the score divided by the length of points times 100 to get a rough accuracy, I accuracy measurement. And I just put the mapping just for the sake of debugging. I when running the loop that calls evaluate, I do a deep copy. I modify a single element, particularly the i element. The array called second will be the same as assumed, except that the i element will be our second choice, and the third element, sorry the array or list called third will have the uh, nth element will be our third choice what this basically means is over here we have this exact thing we have this exact list right here 
and the only difference is that we have our second choice and our third choice. So we have 8, 6, and 0. Over here we have 8, 6, and 0. And what we do is we find out the accuracy of this, 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 and we find out, okay, our accuracy from our mapping is highest when we have 8 right here. Uh, please keep in mind this is accuracy for only predicting zeros, while this is the accuracy for only predicting nines, as in the ninth index. For our label, I just call it the ith index of sum, and we compute the argmax and the argmax that we get out of calling eval three times will tell us the best uh, ranking that we should use and that is how we update I assume so it's iteratively getting better we ended up here with an 8750 but we didn't necessarily have to start, start off with exactly that It's just that the assumption we made ended up being pretty good and our assumption was just to take 875-0-88 and so on out of this first column. And we quickly scroll this with our mapping. We get 20% accuracy. Meanwhile, if for example, we were to We're using a zoom. Our mapping here is called a zoom. We're going to run this again. With this right here. Which is the same thing just by coincidence. We find that if we were to just call everything our most common class, we would have 24% accuracy. If we were to call everything the way how we did it, we actually get less accuracy. Which kind of sucks, but it proves that uh, is a good way of illustrating how this model looks at least. It's just not very good at training on MNIST. If you were to do some type of fraud detection or some uh, non-image classification test, uh, test, maybe even cyber security, this would probably end up doing significantly better. And the main takeaway is that this library called HMM loan will allow us to define a HMM with a number of uh, classes and we can tell it the amount of iterations we want. It is unfortunately single threaded and we can fit it directly onto our data. That means we do not have to deal with a HMM state transition matrix, which is relatively difficult to figure out how to compute. A state transition matrix looks more like this or like this, this is exactly what it looks like, and we would have to define the initial states. So with this library HMM loan, we can avoid having to manually compute this matrix here and having to guess what the initial distributions would be. And that is it. Uh, my next videos on this channel are going to be about cybersecurity and anomaly detection in general. And in the future, I plan on making some videos about uh, LSTMs for, for financial predictions, as well as LSTMs for natural language processing and EEG signal classification. So if you enjoy my videos, please feel free to like and subscribe and have a good day.